All right. Let us now discuss the minimum corporate income tax of 2% on gross income. So, the 2% MCIT or the minimum corporate income tax on gross income is imposed on corporations beginning the fourth year of the corporation. The formula that you have to use is gross income multiplied by 2% is equal to MCIT. You have to pay the MCIT or the net income tax, whichever is higher. So, the rationale here is to prevent corporations from claiming too many deductions. So, we will discuss about MCIT later on. Uh, and passing lang muna tayo dito. Next is the improperly accumulated earnings tax, which is 10% of the taxable income. This tax is imposed on the improperly accumulated earnings by corporations. Okay, the purpose is to discourage the practice of corporations of accumulating earnings and profits in, avo in avoidance of the payment of taxes. To avoid this, you have to distribute earnings among the shareholders. Next is the optional corporate income tax, which is 15% on gross income. Corporations may opt to be taxed at 15% of their gross income in lieu of the net income tax or the MCIT. This may be imposed by the President upon the recommendation of the Department of Finance. What are the sources of income? So what is the relevance in determining the sources of income? Its relevance relates to the income tax liability of the taxpayers. For resident citizens and domestic corporations, they are the only taxpayers liable for income derived from sources within and without the Philippines. So again, yung mga residents ng Philippines and domestic corporations, what we mean by domestic corporations, you have to look for that on Google if you don't know the meaning of it. Please do not um, expect that this lecture will be translated in Tagalog. Okay, so for resident citizens, again, and domestic corporations, they are the only taxpayers liable for income derived from sources within and without the Philippines. So, yung income derived dito sa Pilipinas at kahit na yung income ay derive mula sa ibang bansa, okay, resident citizens of the Philippines and domestic corporations will be liable for their income derived within and without as mentioned so, gross income from sources within the Philippines. This is Section 42, Paragraph A of the NIRC. Number one, interest from sources within the Philippines. Interest derived from sources within the Philippines. Interest earned from domestic bank deposits. Interest on bonds, notes, or other interest-bearing obligations of residents, corporate, or otherwise residents corporations or otherwise so. the determining factor is the residence of the obligor whether individual or corporation dividends in the case of dividends any distribution made by a corporation to its shareholders out of its earnings or profits and payable to its shareholders whether in money or property Dividends issued by foreign corporations are considered income from sources within, provided the two requisites are present. So, ito, you have to comply with the two requisites in order for dividends issued by a foreign corporation to be considered as income from sources within the Philippines. Okay, number one is at least 50% of its gross income is from sources within the Philippines. Okay, at least 50%. So, hindi pwedeng less than 50%. Dapat 50% or more. Such gross income must be for the 3-year period ending with the close of the taxable year. So, remember those two requisites in order for dividends issued by foreign corporations to be considered as income from sources within the Philippines. Number 3 is services. So, this is the compensation for labor or personal services performed in the Philippines. 
The determining factor is the place of performance. Again, the determining factor is the place of performance. The place of payment is irrelevant. So, supposing, okay, a service has been rendered in the Philippines, but payment has been made in Singapore. So, will that be considered as an income derived from within or without the Philippines? The correct answer is, such will be considered as an income within the Philippines because again, the determining factor is the place of performance, not payment. Okay? Another example, what if Laura is a domestic helper in Hong Kong? Okay? She has been employed by a Chinese employer. When she visited the Philippines with her employer, she was paid for her services rendered in Hong Kong. So she received her salary in the Philippines. Will that be considered as an income derived within the Philippines or an income derived without the Philippines? So the correct answer is, it will be considered as an income without the Philippines. Why? We mentioned earlier that the determining factor is the place of performance. And the place of payment is irrelevant here. Laura rendered the service in question in Hong Kong. The only thing that happened in the Philippines is the payment. Again, the determining factor for services is the place of performance and not the place of payment. Number four, rentals and royalties from property located in the Philippines, such as the use of copyright, patent, design, or model, plan, secret formula, or process, goodwill, trademark, trade brand, or other like property or right in the Philippines. The use of industrial, commercial, or scientific equipment in the Philippines. The supply of scientific, technical, industrial, or commercial information. The supply of services by a non-resident person or his employee in connection with the use of property or rights belonging to or the installation or operation of any brand, machinery, or other apparatus purchased from such non-resident person, technical advice, assistance, or services rendered in connection with technical management or administration of any scientific, industrial, or commercial undertaking, the use or right to use motion picture films, films or videos, tapes for use or in connection with TV, tapes used in connection with radio broadcasting, Yan. Yan yung rentals and royalties from property located in the Philippines. Number five, a sale of real property. So the gains, profits, and income from sale of real property located in the Philippines. And the location of the property is the controlling factor to determine the source of the income. Okay, For services, we mentioned earlier that the determining factor is the place of service. Here, for sale of real property, the location of the property is a controlling factor to determine the source of the income. On the other hand, the sale of personal property. In the sale of any um, personal property, any income not falling under any of the six above is an income derived from sources outside the Philippines. Okay, gross income from sources within the Philippines. So, sale of real, uh, personal property should be considered as um, gross income within the, from sources within the Philippines. Okay, as mentioned, any income not falling under any of the six um, examples given previously is an income derived from sources outside the Philippines. Okay, how about if let's make it more complicated. Income from sources partly within and partly without the Philippines. So the taxable income is computed by first deducting the expenses, okay? Again, you have to deduct first the expenses, losses, or other deductions 
apportioned or allocated thereto and rateable part of any expense, loss, or other deduction which cannot definitely be allocated to some items or classes of gross income and the portion of such taxable income attributable to sources within the Philippines. So, the basic formula is gross income within over gross income world is equal to the rate imposed multiplied by the expenses world is equal to expenses to be allowed. Okay, so to illustrate, suppose the gross income within is 10,000 and the gross income world is 100,000 and the expenses world is 50,000. This will be your formula. 10,000 over 100,000 is equal to 10%, which is an imposable um, rate, multiplied by 50,000, which is the expenses world, is equal to 5,000. In this illustration, only 5,000 should be allowed as deduction against the gross income derived in the Philippines. How much, again, is the gross income derived um, in the Philippines? The gross income within is 10,000. So, 10,000 less than 5,000 will only be 5,000. Okay? It's equal to 5,000. 5,000 lang ang allowable deduction sa gross income within the Philippines. Kasi in this case, again, the income is from partly within the Philippines and partly without the Philippines. Okay, take note of this formula para hindi nyo makalimutan na yan. Okay? Next, sale of personal property. So, here are the guidelines for the sale of personal property. For those produced in whole or in part by the taxpayer within and sold without the Philippines, okay, dito ang production, ang sale sa labas ng Pilipinas, or produced in whole or in part by the taxpayer without, okay, ang production naman ito, sa labas ng Pilipinas, ang sale within the Philippines. Then the income shall be treated as partly within and partly without from sources within the Philippines and partly from sources without the Philippines. Number two. For those purchased within and sold without the Philippines or for purchase of personal property without and sold without, the gains, profits, or income shall be treated as derived entirely from sources within the country where the property is sold, okay? Except gains from the sale of shares of stock in a domestic corporation which shall be treated as derived entirely from sources within the Philippines regardless of the place where the shares were sold. So, dito, purchased within, binenta dito sa Pilipinas, tapos, sold without. Okay, dito mo pinurchase, ibibenta mo sa labas ng bansa. Or, dito mo nabili, ay, nabili mo sa ibang bansa, doon mo din binenta. Yung gains mo, or yung kinita mo, or income shall be treated as derived entirely from sources within the country kung saan okay kung saan nabenta yung property okay tandaan niyan medyo nakakalito yan except ang exception ay gains from sales of shares of stock of a domestic corporation which shall be treated entirely as derived from sources within the Philippines regardless of the place where the shares were sold. Okay? So, magkaiba ng case ang personal properties at um, shares of stocks dito. Next. Yeah. Capital gains and losses. So, what is a capital asset? Capital assets are property held by the taxpayer but does not include yeah, the following. Stock in trade of the taxpayer or inventory on hand at the close of the taxable year. Property held primarily for sale to customers in the ordinary course of his business. Property used in the business of a character which is subject to the allowance for depreciation. Real property used in business of the taxpayer. Yeah. So, what is the relevance um, for the determination? 
Yan. Holding period, loss limitation rule, and the net capital loss carryover rule. O, oh, yan. Tandaan yan. Yang tatlong yan. Holding period, loss limitation rule, and the net capital loss carryover rule. Okay, so percentage taken into account. The holding period, okay? Holding period is defined as the length of time or duration by which an individual held the capital asset. In sale of exchange of a capital asset, there are two percentages which should be taken into account in recognizing the gain or loss from such sale or exchange. 100% if the capital asset has been held for not more than 12 months. 50% if held for more than 12 months. Capital assets held by corporations shall not be included. What are the sales which are not subject to this rule? The sale or exchange of shares of stocks, which is a capital asset, the sale or exchange of real property held as a capital asset. Capital gain is included in the gross income subject to net income tax, and a capital gain or loss is included in the gross income. Limitations on capital losses. The loss limitation rule provides that Losses from sales of exchanges of capital assets shall be allowed only to the extent of the capital gains from such sale or exchange. A capital loss can only be deducted from capital gains but never from an ordinary gain, while an ordinary loss may be deducted from both capital and ordinary gain, and this is applicable to individual and corporations. What is or are the rationale? Ordinarily, a capital gain is included in the gross income. The items included in the gross income are ordinary gains and losses. Those related to the ordinary businesses. With respect to capital losses, these are not related to the ordinary business of the taxpayer. A capital loss may only be deducted from a capital gain. If there is any. So what then is the remedy of the taxpayer? Where there is capital loss but there is no capital gain. Here you have to apply the NOLCO rule. Or the net operation loss carryover rule. So the NOLCO rule provides that any capital loss sustained by the taxpayer during a taxable year shall be treated in the succeeding taxable year as a loss from sale or exchange of capital asset held for not more than 12 months. So the requisites for you to apply this rule is that or are number one, the amount of loss should not exceed the net income for the taxable year when the loss was occurred. Number two, there should be capital gain from which the carryover loss can be deducted. Number three, this can only be availed by individuals. Next, I short sales. A short sale is defined as a sale where the seller is selling a property without distinction of what kind of property he is selling, whether a share of stock or not. The seller is selling property which he is not in his possession. Any gains or losses are considered as capital gains or losses. Okay. In the case of Kalasans versus CIR, a conversion from capital to ordinary asset is allowed provided that it is in furtherance of the taxpayer's business and substantially improved or very actively sold or both. Okay. So, properties classified as ordinary assets are automatically converted into capital assets 
upon showing of proof that the same have not been used in business for mo more than two years prior to the consummation of the taxable transactions involving said properties. So the resident citizen is the only individual taxpayer who is liable for income derived from all sources within and without the Philippines. Okay, so resident citizen, non-resident citizen, OCW and seamen, and resident alien. So the net income tax is defined as the pertinent items of gross income, less deductions, and or personal and additional exemptions. So this is the only kind of income tax which admits of deductions, personal and additional exemptions. Married individuals shall compute separately their individual income tax. However, this is applicable only for individuals earning purely compensation income. Married individuals who do not derive income purely from compensation shall file a consolidated return to include income of both spouses except where it is impracticable. So RA 9504 exempts minimum wage earners from the payment of net income tax. For the final income tax for passive income, it includes ito, interest, royalties, prices, and other winnings. Applicable tax is 20%. Passive income should be derived from sources within the Philippines. For FCDU deposits, you have to apply 7.5%. Long-term deposits or investments are exempt from final tax. Okay. Ayan. Tinan niya mga rates. For prizes, before tax is imposed, must be derived from sources within the Philippines. Must be more than 10,000 and must be pursuant to a promotion or contest. What prizes are exempted from tax? Okay. Where one is received primarily in recognition of religious, charitable, scientific, educational, artistic, literary, or civic achievement. The recipient was selected without any action on his part to enter the contest or proceeding. The recipient is not rec um, required to render substantial future services as a condition to receiving the prize or award. Winnings are subject to final withholding tax of 20%, including winnings pursuant to gambling, except those which are um, accredited by the PCSO. So, for cash and or property dividends, only cash and property dividends are subject to 10% final income tax. Stock dividends are not taxable since such dividends are only a transfer of the surplus profit from the retained earnings to the authorized capital stock. The share of an individual in the distributable net income tax after tax, um, net income after tax of a partnership of which he is a partner is subject to final income tax. A resident citizen Non-resident citizen, OCW, and seamen and resident alien capital gains from sale of shares of stocks not traded in the stock exchange. Okay, so the net capital gains from sale, barter exchange, or other disposition of shares of stock in a domestic corporation not listed and traded is sub subject to a final tax rate of 5% for the first 100,000 of the net capital gain and 10% of the net capital gain of any amount in less than 100,000. So the elements required is or are shares must be shares in a domestic corporation. Shares are capital assets. The shares are not listed and traded in the local course. For listed shares, the gains are not subject to income tax but subject to a business tax or percentage tax at the rate of one half of 1% of the gross selling price. And for capital gains from sale of pre, uh, real property, final income tax of 6% based on the gross selling price or the fair market value, whichever is higher, shall be posted on the capital gains provided that the property sold is a real property and not a personal property it should be located in the Philippines and not elsewhere. It is classified as a capital asset. And the sale of a natural person's principal residence may be exempted from payment of the 6% capital gains tax. 
when the proceeds of the sale are fully utilized in acquiring or constructing a new principal residence within 18 months from the date of notarization of the deed of sale. So, the sale of mortgage property is taxable only if the buyer is other than a financial institution. For non-resident um, non -resident alien engaged in trade of business um, in trade or business in the Philippines. So, the net income tax. Ayan. So, a non-resident alien engaged in trade or business in the Philippines is subject to the net income tax. They are liable only for income derived from sources within the Philippines. For final income tax, the cash and or property dividends or share in the distributable net income of a partnership, not a general partnership, interests, royalties, and other winnings. 20% final income tax levied on letter A and for prices less than 10,000 pesos. The applicable tax is the net income tax. Prices from PCSO and Lotto are exempt from income tax. Royalties for literary work subject to tax rate of only 10%. Interest income from ayan, literary deposits and investments are exempt to final income tax. Capital gains, ayan, same as resident alien engaged in trade or business in the Philippines. For non-resident aliens not engaged in trade or business in the Philippines, for their net income tax, the non-resident alien not um, engaged in trade or business in the Philippines shall be liable for the entire income he derived from all sources within the Philippines by way of the gross income tax. The tax rate for them is 25% on gross income. And for their final income tax, the sale of shares of stock or sale of real property, which are capital assets, you have to use the rate in the next section, which will be 15% final income tax. So, okay, we'll end here muna, and we will continue next time. Uh, dito sa... Aliens employed by MNCs, oh, oh, yeah, offshore banking units, and petroleum service contractors. Yan. Yan ang magiging topic natin for next week. For the meantime, stop muna tayo dito para hindi kayo ma brain soup. Okay? So, proceed tayo with the question and answer portion. So, we'll start with question number one. The Congress of the Philippines, in its desire to broaden the scope of taxation, enacted the law subjecting the armed forces of the Philippines to income taxation, asserting that it directly exercises the sovereign powers of the state and is, therefore, exempt as a government entity. Is the law passed by the Congress valid and constitutional? You have to explain that briefly. So, the correct answer is yes, the law may be valid and constitutional. As a rule, the power of taxation recognizes the exemption of government entities, provided such entities directly exercise the sovereign powers of the state. The reason for this is obvious. The state, in effect, would be taxing itself. However, the Supreme Court in a case has ruled that there is no constitutional limitation for Congress to tax the armed forces if it so desires. Next question. An electric company in one city paid fees for the inspection of its boilers by the inspectors of the Department of Labor. These steam boilers were also subjected to tax and to inspection by the city engineer of the locality. Is there a conflict between the city and the Department of Labor in imposing the said burden on the same subject? Explain briefly.
The correct answer is no. There is no conflict between the two powers simultaneously exercised by the city and the Department of Labor for the following reasons. A. The city is exercising the power of taxation, whereas the Department of Labor is exercising its police power. B. The purpose of the former is to raise revenue, whereas the purpose of the latter is regulation. And C. There is no direct double taxation in the instant case because the two different taxing authorities are involved. Third question. A municipal ordinance imposes an occupation tax on the occupation of installation manager. X, who happened to be the only installation manager in the locality, objected on the ground that the ordinance is discriminatory as he was the only one subjected to the tax. Is X's objection meritorious? The correct answer is no. X's contention that the tax is discriminatory is devoid of any legal merit. Although he is the only one subjected to the tax at the moment, the fact that the said tax applies to all the insulation managers that may be in the locality in the future. Therefore, the tax does not violate the uniformity rule of taxation. Another question. Why? A Filipino permanently stationed for work in Singapore met Z, a Brazilian tourist. The two became acquainted with each other and Z offered to buy the gold watch of Y. Y consented and the friends agreed that payment and delivery of the item would be made in the Philippines. A week later, when Y would go home and Z would tour the islands, the sale was consummated as agreed. Is the income derived from the sale a taxable transaction under Philippine tax law? Explain, explain briefly. The correct answer is no. The income from the sale of Wise Gold Watch is not taxable under Philippine tax law. The situs of taxation of a business transaction is the place where the act is performed. The sale is perfected in Singapore because a sale is a consensual contract and being classified as a non-resident citizen, Y is taxed only on income derived within the Philippines. Next question. What is the income tax treatment of royalties received by resident citizens from sources without the Philippines? The correct answer is Royalties received by a resident citizen from sources without the Philippines should be included as part of his gross income subject to the graduated income tax rates. Those received by domestic corporations shall also form part of their gross income subject to the corporate income tax rate.
Next question. What is the income tax treatment of prizes and winnings received by resident citizens from sources without the Philippines? A perfect example uh, for this question is Manny Pacquiao. So, what is the tax treatment of his prizes and winnings received by him being a resident citizen from sources without the Philippines? Again, what do we mean by sources without the Philippines? Ito yung sources outside the Philippines. Remember that Manny Pacquiao competes um, internationally. So, kung nasa ang bansa man siya, at kung manalo man siya sa mga laban niya, ano ang magiging tax treatment ng kanyang magiging premyo? So, the correct answer is, Prizes and winnings received by resident citizens from sources without the Philippines shall form part of their gross income subject to the graduated income tax rates. So, he will be taxed here in the Philippines. As his winnings will form part of his gross income, which will be, which will be subject to the graduated income tax rates as prescribed by the National Interve Internal Revenue Code. Next question. What is the income tax treatment of tournament prizes won by local and foreign players or participants? Ito naman, mga foreigner na nandito sa ating bansa na nanalo sa mga tournament na dinaluhan nila. Ano ang magiging tax treatment ng kanilang napanalunan kung sila ay nandito sa ating bansa? either local and foreign player or participants. Answer is cash prizes won by local players or participants in tournaments shall form part of their gross income subject to the graduated income tax rates. The same is not passive income subject to the final tax since the players or participants are engaged in the exercise of, the, um, of their profession or occupation. Those won by foreign players or participants shall be subject to 30% final tax withheld, being considered as a non-resident alien, not engaged in trade or business in the Philippines. So, Kung mapapansin nyo, magkaiba ang treatment sa local players as compared to foreign players. Sa local players, yung mga napanalunan nila sa kanilang mga tournaments ay magiging subject to the graduated income tax rates. Bakit graduated income tax rates? Because they are engaged in the exercise of their profession or occupation. On the other hand, when it comes to foreign players or participants, sa kanila naman, ang magiging tax treatment ay 30% final tax withheld. Bakit? Because considered sila as non-resident aliens not engaged in trade or business in the Philippines. Another question. X, a Filipino, who is married with three dependent children, is a technical consultant of a multinational company in Dubai. His contract calls for his stay in the foreign country during the month of March, April, and May, and also during the month of September, October, and November of each calendar year. Other than these months, X spent his time with his family in the Philippines. His total compensation income for the current taxable year amounts to 2,400,000 pesos. Now, the question is, is excess compensation income subject to Philippine income tax? Explain, explain briefly. The correct answer is no. Excess compensation income is not subject to Philippine income tax as X is classified 
as a non-resident citizen because he works and derives income abroad in his employment in Dubai and requires his physical presence thereat for not less than 180 days during the taxable year. Again, a non-resident is taxed only on his income derived within the Philippines. Another question. A Chinese national came to the Philippines on January 1, 2004 and stayed here until May 31, 2008. Let her mean the classification of the taxpayer for the taxable year 2004. For the taxable year 2004, the Chinese national should be classified as a non-resident alien engaged in trade or business in the Philippines, having stayed in the country for more than 180 days during the said calendar year. He cannot yet be classified as a resident alien because his stay here did not exceed 12 months during 2004. And in case his stay here exceeds 12 months, he must have the intention of staying here in on a more or less permanent basis. Last question. X, an Italian actor residing in his own country, was contracted by Philippine Movie Company to do a film here. The shooting period of the film commenced on January 1 and ended on May 31 of the same taxable year. The motion picture contract called for a talent fee of 4 million pesos. The movie company sought your legal advice regarding the tax implication of the talent fee payable to X. What would your legal advice be to your client? Explain briefly. The answer is, I would advise my client that as far as X is concerned, he is deemed a non-resident alien, not engaged in trade or business in the Philippines due to the fact that his stay here in the Philippines is not more than 180 days during the calendar year. He is, therefore, subject to the 25% final withholding tax imposed on such taxpayer. The movie company should withhold the amount of 1 million pesos to be remitted to the BIR and actually would pay X the sum of 3 million only, the net of the final withholding tax. So that will be the end of the Q&A portion for the general principles up to the tax on individuals based on the introductory part of the law on income taxation. So for next week, we will again uh, proceed with the usual lecture and after that, we will be conducting again a Q&A um, portion just like this. Thank you for watching and until next time.